you're getting close to passing Michael Jordan. And, oh, really? like, I know it's a ways away, but just what would that mean for you to be able to pass him on the list and scoring? How far am I away? Uh, I'm not sure. Couple hundred. I think you could break it maybe in January projection or something like that. Oh, that's not that far. <laughs> <laughs> you said ways away. I thought it was like a year or two. Uh, uh, listen, man. Uh, in all seriousness, at the end of the day, for me, uh, anytime I'm even mentioned with the greats uh, that played this game, uh, the guys before me who, who just laid the path, laid the grounds in the work, and, you know, allowed me to be in this position. It's just always uh, humbling and gratifying for my city. You know, just knowing where I come from. Some of you guys know where I come from, has been there, some of you guys haven't, but where I come from, there's not many of us. Very limited. Uh, very, very uh, limited inspirations, very limited resources, very limited. Well, I need to be in this position uh, where I'm at today. Uh, it's just a blessing. You know, the first time you met MJ, what was that like when you met him for the first time? Uh, it, was, uh, it was godly. Said that over and over, before, but it was like meeting God for the first time. And that's what I felt like as a 16 year old kid when I met him. He's obviously now the owner of the Hornets. Any thoughts? Pick his brain on what it's like to own an NBA team, what that incredible transition's like from playing to like constructing a team? Um, well, not right now in my career. Um, I still have a lot of years to give to this game as far as playing, but. I would like to own a team at some point, but we'll see what happens. In what ways did he pave the way for guys like you to broaden um, kind of your business empire? Um, MJ made the game global. He made the game global. He made people all over the world want to watch the game of basketball um, because of his marketability, because of the way he played the game of basketball, um, because of who he was. He kind of transcended that era. Um, you know, we needed, you know, Bird and Magic. Um, when they came into the league, it was fitting. It was perfect, it was perfect timing for Magic to be with the Lakers and Bird to be with the Celtics, you know, and, and all the battles that they went through. And then when MJ came in in 84 and, um, you know, started to do what he did, he made the game global. And obviously, that 92 um, Barcelona run that the Dream Team had, it just solidified why he was the, the uh, best athlete in the world to do as, as such so and then uh you know between you know MJ and, and David Stein they turned into a what it is today and, and Adam Silver and guys like myself is just trying to keep it going. You see a clip the other night where Malik Monk celebrated uh, a shot for the Hornets mm -hmm. and, and Jordan kind of you know, yeah he missed it. the first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is, is that just comfortable with the territory you imagine playing with the, you know playing for a competitive guy like that or nah, it doesn't matter I mean I don't I don't I don't even know why I was even called to be honest that happens all the time in the NBA I've never seen that being resulted in the technical guys run on the court when they think the game is over it just but anyway but he owns the team do what he wanted to do <laughs> When you first met Kemba and what kind of development you've seen over the last few years, you said he mentioned maybe at a camp back in 2008, 2009. Yeah, my camp back in, in Akron. I used to have a, uh, a camp back in my hometown, and uh, you know, just from that from that point on, you know, you always you see qualities in guys and you try to keep up on, and keep you know, keep up with their process and see how they continue to improve. And I was the player of the year today because he just dedicated himself to his craft every day, you know, and uh, shown. How difficult is what he's doing for an undersized, uh, undersized guard? He's got a game of 16, 43. And the game increasingly getting bigger, does that make it even more impressive seeing was what he's doing this year? Um, I think we get caught up in people's heights and weights and don't really talk about people's hearts. That's, what, that's the measure of a, of a man at the end of the day, no matter if you're playing sports or not. So. It doesn't matter. We got guys in our league that's not the tallest, not the fastest. Uh, don't jump the highest, but do great things. I like Steph Curry. I like Kimball Walker. So, here we are. What about how he's improved his game so far, Kimball, over the last few years? So, had to make him into his game and just make him a better player out there. Uh, I mean, if you want to be great, you have to continue to improve when he's done that. Where are you guys at personally? I mean, after a tough loss in Houston, the development of the team overall, are you, are you pleased with that? 
Yeah, we always should be. You know, through 28 games, we always should be, and we want to continue to get better. We want to get better tonight. LeBron, I'm with FIBA, so I have a bit of a different picture. I was wondering if you could comment on the job that Jeff Van Gundy and the G Leaguers did in qualifying the USA for China next year and getting you know, guys like yourself qualified. Um, I think Jeff has done a great job since he's taken over that um, that position. And, um, you know, we want to continue to build USA basketball no matter um, no matter if you're still playing or you've been a part of past teams, we're all one family. So, you know, it was great. Thank you. It sounded like you had one. <laughs> you lost it. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. It's floating around. I was wondering, um, I, I listened to the podcast that you did with Mike. And uh, talked about using the, the Calm app for the sleep, mm -hmm. like to help you sleep. Um, do, you, uh, do you do the meditations? Um, yeah, I guess in some form. You know, I, I kind of decompress from the world and just kind of sit and you know, just chill, listen to my, my own thoughts and you know, things of that nature for probably 15, 20 minutes a day. So, uh, so yes, that's, that's a form of meditation. I think everyone's uh, can be different, but I do. Did you any other guided ones? No. Yeah. Oh, just let yourself sit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that easy for you to sit with your own thoughts? Because that's hard for us. Uh, it, it, it is. It is now. I've been doing it for a few years now. It is now. It, it doesn't start off pretty. Uh, you feel kind of weird about it at first because it's something that's new or something that's outside the box for myself. Uh, but I got more and more comfortable with my. Inner, inner self, inner spirits, you know, and you know, the energy and things of that nature, I guess. Um, so it works for me. When did you start doing that? Uh, I can't pinpoint it when, but probably over the last few years. You're doing the backseat of a Kia. Huh? You're doing the backseat of a Kia. I have before. <laughs> yep, I have before.